One of the biggest challenges with establishing companion crops in any cash crop is trying to figure out how to manage weeds while letting a companion crop thrive because it is very difficult to go into a system and say that I want certain plants to grow there but not other plants. So fortunately for us we were already mechanically managing our weeds so working with cultivation actually has a lot of advantages over using herbicides. So when you're bringing in companion crops one of the major goals is bringing in diversity. So when you're introducing diversity into a system it's going to be very challenging to find a herbicide that is going to be selective in exactly the right ways to only remove the weeds but not remove any of the companion crops. But as far as cultivation goes there are a, a different set of challenges that come along with finding companion crops that are going to work that also work with cultivation. When I first decided that I was going to start implementing companion crops into our potatoes I already knew that we would be using cultivation for our weed management so I had to keep that in mind. Um, a few thoughts I had was I had an option of either broadcasting the seed after planting but then that would cause problems because the cultivation would take out those weeds during that first pass. I really thought my best chance of success was to go ahead and plant the companion crop while I was planting potatoes. So I added some gandy boxes onto the front of my planter. The biggest thing I had to figure out initially was just what seeding rate I wanted to use. Fortunately with the gandy boxes I'll, I'm able to change some gear ratios and change the uh, planting population to meet my needs. One of my biggest concerns initially was the planting depth of the companion crop. Since the planter was already planting potato seeds it was an ideal opportunity to just drop that seed down at the same time. So the companion crop seed is all planted at the exact same depth of, of a seed potato. Now that's a good depth for a seed potato. They have a lot of energy a nice strong stem they can come up from those depths but I really didn't know if those companion crops would come up from that depth at first. The depth of the planting was actually a major contributing factor towards selecting the seed that I thought could come up from that depth. So what I'm currently doing is I have a, a five species mix and so we've got field peas, chickpeas, faba beans, chickling vetch, and buckwheat all planted at this depth. Um, I can't go with a too small of a seed because it just won't have the energy to come up from that depth. So everything had to be a pretty good sized seed to go into this mix. I really had no clue initially how much seed to put in as well. So the first year I just did a lot of trials. I was anywhere from 5 to 40 pounds per acre of this mix. And I just, based off of the stands and how everything looked at the end of the season, I, I determined that about 15 pounds per acre was ideal. Um, this also kept the, uh, the idea very economic. I figure I usually spend about six to eight dollars per acre on this companion crop mix. Initially the concern was whether or not the companion crop seed come up, could come up from that depth. So what was really interesting is the first couple years when I did this consistently the companion crop was beating the potato sprouts out of the ground. So this was something I had to keep in mind because this was a little bit surprising and I was really anticipating them coming up a little bit slower in order to work well with my cultivation practices. When I go through my potato rows and manage for weeds I use a four row cultivator. So there are sweeps that go down into the furrow and take care of the weeds for me. Now when I make the first pass I have an additional piece that I add to the cultivator that goes across the top of the hill. I make this pass when the potato sprouts are just a couple inches long and have not come up yet because I really don't want to go through and knock the tops of the potato sprouts off when I'm making this initial pass. So as you can see I often have a lot of the companion crop seed already coming up out of the top of the hill when I make this initial pass. The first year that this happened to me I was pretty certain I was about to take out the majority of my companion crop and I thought that this maybe wasn't going to work with my cultivation system that I had set up. So when I make my first pass with the cultivator I go through the top of the hills and I do end up doing a lot of damage to the companion crops. 
But what's really interesting is because of the growth habit of the legumes that I have selected, when I knock the tops of those sprouts off, they simply go down to the next node and they send up a new shoot. This works with my mix because all of the legumes I have in, in the companion crop mix are hypogeal. And what that means is they leave the cotyledons down in the soil and send up a shoot. Now if I was selecting different species such as a, a dry pinto bean or something, they have an epigeal growth habit. And so they would actually push the cotyledons up out of the soil. And if I did damage to that at that point, it would end the growth of that plant. But since they are hypogeal, I have those nodes deeper in the soil that allow the plant to restart. The buckwheat is also hypogeal, but it does not recover as well from the damage caused by cultivation. But the reason I think buckwheat works well is because it is a warm season plant, so it waits for the soil to warm up before it emerges, whereas all the legumes are cool season and actually really thrive in that cool wet soil, and that's a big reason why they come up so fast. After the companion crop has had a chance to recover and start sending up new growth above the hills and my potatoes continue to grow, this is when I'm preparing for my second cultivation. So you'll notice the, it's the same cultivator, but now one thing that's different is I do remove that rod. I no longer want to be taking the top of that hill off because I have plants that have emerged. So I take that piece off and go through with my second cultivation, which is about two weeks after that initial pass was made. During all of this, I really don't scout for weeds. The timing with the growth of the potato plant and the companion crop is really the factor that I'm looking at. As long as I respect that timing and make my three passes each year, I end up with really good weed management. About six weeks after planting is when I will make my last pass with the cultivator. Once again, the rod is obviously not on the top again, and I'm basically waiting as long as I can to make this pass. The potatoes will be pretty big at this point and I want to make the pass through the field just before the potatoes get big enough to close the rows. So you can see in this video here I'm right up to the edge of those potatoes with my tire but I'm not running them over completely so I'm not doing any damage to the potato crop or the companion crop. Some people will argue that herbicides are better because you don't have this physical disturbance of this soil. So it is important to keep in mind that I am physically disturbing the soil by making this pass, but to me it's a good trade-off in order to be able to manage these weeds without the use of herbicides. So this is an, the end product. Potato field that is clean of weeds, but still has a healthy potato crop and a healthy companion crop. Uh, one of the concerns early on as well was with seed certification. The inspectors were a little worried about having companion crops out there because they thought it might impede their inspection. But when everything is balanced properly, it, the companion crops really complement the potato crop and at no point do they ever overwhelm them. So this is really an ideal situation for me and I'm very pleased with how everything works together as far as having companion crops in my potatoes and still being able to manage my weeds very effectively in this system.